Hey everybody, it's Jeremy, and welcome to another Sipping with Jeremy. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite categories of American whiskeys, Bottle and Bond. But Bottle and Bond whiskeys can really be any style of whiskey that's made in the United States. You can have bourbon, you can have rye, you can have weeded. Any type of grain whiskey that is made here in the United States can be called a bonded whiskey. And they just have to follow the simple rules of being Bottle and Bond, which are all the grains harvested for that whiskey must come from one harvest. So we're in 2023 right now. So any bottle and bond whiskeys that get barreled this year, all the grain from that must come from this single year of 2023. Besides the grains coming from one harvest, it all must be made at one distillery as well. So that means it's all taken to one distillery, it's all distilled from that distillery, it's all barrel aged at that distillery. And on the label that must be notified if it is aged somewhere else. The aging must be a minimum of four years, which happens in a bonded warehouse that is government supervised. And at bottling, the whiskey must be at 100 proof or 50% ABV. And the only way to cut it down from over 100 to that 100 proof is by water. Now, some of you might be asking for what reason they have these strict rules for something to be called bottle and bond. And that is because of the Bottle and Bond Act of 1897. Before the 1920s, when we were trying to make sure consumers were safe from alcohol instead of destroying alcohol as complete, uh, they made the, the 1897 Bottle and Bond Act, which protected customers. So someone could go and find a bonded whiskey and know that it was government regulated, it was protected, and that they knew it was a safe whiskey to drink. So as I said before, you know, bottle and bond whiskeys can be any style of whiskey, but today we have four different ones for you. We have Old Granddad Bourbon, we have Evan Williams bourbon, we have Rittenhouse rye, and then we have Frey Ranch rye as well. So let's get us talking about these. Let's start with the Old Granddad. So Old Granddad is a Jim Beam product. Uh, it is named after Basil Hayden Sr. So Basil Hayden Sr. liked making high rye whiskeys. He passed that lineage down to his son, who was Basil Hayden Jr., and then his grandson, Colonel R.B. Hayden, who properly named one of his high rye whiskeys after his old granddad. So as a high rye, you can't expect this to be a little bit more on the spicy side, but let's try it out and see what this is like. Not too surprising for a high rye bourbon that the rye is going to be the first thing that your palate really connects to. Uh, you get this nice spice of rye, a little bit of floral rye too, but then that develops into some nice kind of apple fruit. Just a little bit more fresh kind of red apple kind of juiciness, not the sweetness of an apple, but just kind of gives you this refreshing kind of soft mid palate. Uh, then you get a little bit more toasted toffee on the back end there. There are hints of the baking spice that kind of replace the rye, but the rye is definitely prominent throughout your drinking experience with this bourbon. But that toffee on the back end with that apple fruit definitely does soften it up, kind of mellows everything out. While the rye does linger, it's not as aggressive as it is when it first hit the palate. You know, I myself really like Ball and Bond whiskeys for cocktails. Uh, you know, they are that 100 proof. So as you are diluting them with whatever else you're adding to the drink, you still get to taste the flavor of the whiskey a lot, especially something with the high rye content like this. This is like one of my favorite go-tos for cocktails because that high rye is going to work in a cocktail really nicely the apple fruit is going to come out really nicely and again at your had 100 proof here so as you're adding more stuff to it even if you're diluting your drink with whatever else you're adding to it you still get to taste and you still get the effect of the bourbon so that was old granddad so let's move on to evan williams evan williams is a heaven hill product and it is named after the first distillery in kentucky evan williams which was in 1783 and this is their white label. A lot of you might be more familiar with the black label from Evan Williams. That is their standard bourbon. The white label is the Bottle and Bond, so that's the easiest way to tell the difference on the shelf. Let's go ahead and try this out. So off the bat, one of the first things that's noticeable compared Evan Williams to the old granddad is that this is a lot softer of a whiskey. You know, it is probably more of that standard, much more higher corn than rye comparison you know so you have a lot more of that sweetness of the corn so you get a lot more stone fruit actually it's funny how corn becomes stone fruit after you age it but i do get a lot of like peach notes on this there's a lot of black tea too black tea and baking spices uh this is just a really subtle 
soft whiskey, which is dangerous given the fact that it is 50% alcohol. So it's just really easy drinking. Again, a lot of stone fruit, softer black tea notes, softer baking spice flavors. I'm not getting a whole lot of sweetness, so you're not getting a whole lot of chocolate or a lot of like toffee or flavors like that, not a vanilla, uh, but definitely just some stone fruit, really easy black tea. Uh, again, that softer baking spice on the finish. There's a little bit of a cinnamon note. I guess that'd be the one little bit of sweetness is there are some cinnamon flavors here. But yeah, uh, stone fruit, black tea, baking spices, cinnamon forward. Um, yeah, just a super easy drink. And again, dangerous that this is 100 proof alcohol that is super soft and easy to drink. Let's move on from the Evan Williams to another Heaven Hill product and go to the Rittenhouse Rye. So an important thing to do while drinking in general, but especially while drinking 100 proof whiskeys, don't forget to hydrate people, drink water. So Rittenhouse Rye is a Heaven Hill product. It is a Pennsylvania style rye named after the famous Rittenhouse Square located in Philadelphia. And a lot of the ryes we saw in history and that we're seeing now are coming from that Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Maryland region because Pennsylvania and Maryland have been historical places for rye whiskey in the United States. And this is just an homage to it. You know, Rittenhouse Rye is probably one of the first bottle and bond whiskeys I ever had. And this is another one that's great for cocktails. Uh, let's give it a try on its own and see what we think. So I've mentioned it in other videos that rye whiskeys don't always just have that rye spice taste to them. You know, sometimes there are these secondary spice flavors. And Rittenhouse definitely has some of that. Yeah, you get more of those caraway and fennel flavors with that rye spice more dry cocoa on the back end and just kind of stays savory on the palate so again great for cocktails hey if you're looking for a nice cocktail rye i don't think there's much better than this so now let's move on to our last bottle of the day the frey ranch rye so frey ranch is a family-owned ranch and distillery in fallon nevada colby frey is running operations and this rye is 100% sustainable winter rye and is aged for five years. And let's go ahead and give it a try. That's a real expressive rye. So you definitely get classic rye spice up front, but then there's this really nice combination of like apple fruit with some softer kind of cocoa flavors to it as well. Then there is more of the baking spice kind of profile that comes out. Uh, not as much, I wouldn't say it's not aggressive rye flavor though. There's definitely this kind of nice spicy warmness to it uh, that fits more in the baking spice world that has a little bit of those rye kind of characteristics to it. But it's just this really nice clean vegetal rye flavor, green flavor, uh, that just makes it super easy drinking. Just like with the Evan Williams, you're talking about this super easy drinking profile on a whiskey that's 100 proof so it makes it really dangerous because you can just sip on this and like the other three those are much more cocktail kind of whiskeys for me something like the Frey Ranch uh, not just because of its price but just because of the elegance it has there are a lot of layers here you can taste it you know as I'm talking to you even I can get more vanilla kind of characteristics coming out with those cinnamon spices on the back end with those baking spices so there's definitely as as you're going on there's more layers on this so there's definitely more to think about with this whiskey this is definitely more of a sipping bond than bond and there's plenty of those out there in the world. Uh, you know, I really enjoy the fact that there is the variety of bottle and bond. As we were talking earlier, you have, you know, any type of American whiskey can be bottle and bond, but they also come in all types of prices too. The first three we, that we talked about, you know, more in the everyday kind of price range, you know, you're under 30, $35 a bottle for this. This guy gets a little above that, but this is again, more of a sipping kind of style. So, you know, you're gonna take a little longer to enjoy this one. You're gonna throw an ice cube in there. Let that dilute a little bit, see what characteristics come out of that. Y'all, that's going to wrap up this week's Sipping with Jeremy. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you learned a little bit of something about the bottle and bond whiskey world. And I hope you learned a little bit of something about these four SKUs in front of us. Below, we will have links to our store website where all four of these bottles are available. And we also will have a link to a blog post I did about bottle and bond whiskey last year. I hope you're enjoying what you're finding on these. If there's anything you want to look at, please review. Let me know. Thank you so much for joining me for Sipping with Jeremy. Have a great day. Drink well.